This is a gold crest, weighing only 5 grams and measuring just 9 centimeters long. And this is a white-tailed eagle, an absolute behemoth of a bird that can reach 7 kilograms and 90 centimeters from beak to tail, which makes them over a thousand times bigger. In this video, I'll be trying to find both of these species in the wild, while sharing some juicy facts that show just how staggeringly different they really are. Let's get cracking. I'm currently on my way to one of my favourite places in the UK, and that's because it's home to a pair of white-tailed eagles. I've visited these amazing birds several times before, but I honestly think I could come here every day and not get tired of seeing them. There really isn't anything else that compares in this country and the sheer scale of them just never gets old. So I've got myself into position now. I'm just gazing out to the tree that I know you can spot eagles in sometimes. So hopefully it doesn't take hours because if you've seen my other video on eagles, it can take hours and my butt gets very sore sitting on this little log. I couldn't spot any eagles just yet, but there was a large flock of swallows darting about. I did my best to film them, but it was incredibly challenging. I think a handful of the shots turned out all right though. I also got momentarily excited when I spotted this guy that I thought was an eagle, but it turns out it was a marsh harrier, which is still pretty awesome to be fair. This red kite also soared over at one point that was being harassed by some jackdaws. Then I spotted this bird, which I initially thought was a buzzard, but after noticing its very obvious orangey red tail, I'm now pretty convinced that it's a red-tailed hawk. Apparently, it's exceptionally unlikely that it's a wild one, so it's almost certainly an escaped captive bird. I want to keep this location private to help protect the eagles, but if anyone happens to know anything about a missing red-tailed hawk in the southeast, please feel free to get in touch with me. So just to start putting these birds into perspective, white-tailed eagles' talons can be up to seven centimetres long, which is almost the same length as a gold crest. So that is mental. If these two ever got in a scrap, it's gonna be quite one-sided. Okay, so I've been here for about 45 minutes, but I've only just realised that the eagle's been sat in the tree the whole time. I did a more thorough scan of the tree and spotted him. He's just kind of obscured by some branches at the moment, but that's a very good sign. So it means it's only a matter of time before he flies off, soars into the skies, and hopefully comes in this direction and I can get some awesome shots of this magnificent specimen to show you. Oh, would you look at that? What a stunning shot of this incredible creature. Nah, this sucks, eh? But I did get some much better footage later on. But before I show you that, let's start the search for the gold crest. Eyo. So I'm out here starting the search for Britain's smallest bird, the gold crest. Now, as you can imagine, it's going to be a little bit tricky because it's about that big, barely the size of a ping pong ball. But I'm going to keep my eyes out. Apparently I'm in a good spot for them and hopefully it won't take me too long to get a little bit of crispy footage to show you. So if I know gold crests, and I think I do, they like pine trees. They can often be seen flittering around looking for little insects and grubs, and that's typically where you're gonna see them. And there's lots of nice pine trees, such as this one and this one. So yeah, keep looking around here, should find something. So there's a golf course over there, and I just got a bit sidetracked. But I play golf, but I'm a little bit shit, so it's nice to get some freebies. You're just going to have to get used to my voice, by the way. I've got a cold in the middle of summer somehow and sound a little bit like a frog. Right, I think it's safe to say I did get a bit distracted by the golf balls. I've found <laughs> quite a few now. As you can see, I've been crawling through the brambles, collecting them all. But hey, providing the service, litter picking, basically. Right, so check this out for a bit of a nettle sting. You might as well enjoy the guns while you're there, hey? But yeah, that's a bit of a beast. The things I'll do for bulls. One more. Right, I can definitely hear gold crests now. 
Murdered and even confirmed it for me. So let me stop thinking about balls and start thinking about gold crests. They're so hard to spot. So I'm pretty sure the ones that were just here have passed through, unfortunately. I'm still gonna loiter here for a few more minutes to see if I see anything. But I did manage to get a nice shot of a tree creeper and another little bird, probably a chiff chaff. Um, but not what I wanted. That was amazing. I finally got some gold crest shots. I'm in the Forest of Dean at the moment and I just stumbled across them. <gasps> All those little attempts going out specifically to find them, then just strolling down this path. I see some up in this tree and I've got some usable shots. They weren't that far away. So that's awesome. Britain's tiniest bird. It is minuscule, isn't it? This little thing compared to those eagles is mental. So I'm going to hang around here for a bit longer and see if I can get even more shots, but so happy to finally get that ticked off. Now that I've managed to locate both of these amazing creatures, let's get stuck in some juicy facts. Goldcrests craft their nests from moss, lichen and spiderwebs. They build a cup-shaped structure which they typically suspend from the end of a conifer branch, or safely tucked away within some dense ivy. The materials and location help to keep it hidden from predators. And then there's white-tailed eagle nests, which couldn't be much more different if they tried. These guys build some of the largest nests out of any bird on the planet. They use mainly sticks and branches with a smaller amount of soft materials like grass and moss to create a cosier spot to lay the eggs on. The reason their nests get so big is that they usually use the same one every year and add to it each time. They often reach two meters across and two meters deep, but some have even been recorded as reaching 3.7 meters tall and weighing over a ton. Four. Before I get into the next fact, I'm hoping some of you will be able to help me identify yet another bird of prey I filmed on this day. In this shot, there's a beautiful red kite perched on the left hand side of the tree, but then there's also this chap. It was a similar size and shape to a buzzard, but it seems to have way too much white plumage to be one if you ask me. I'm kind of hoping it's an osprey, as that would be a new species for my quest to find every animal in the UK, but I'm not entirely convinced. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments. Goldcrest's main snacks of choice are small insects, spiders and caterpillars, but will also eat seeds in winter. They pretty much never stop foraging, as you can tell from this footage, which is why they are so infuriatingly difficult to film. Sit still, would you? Their vastly chunkier cousins, however, eat substantially larger prey, which means they don't have to hunt as frequently. And that's why sometimes I'll stare at a stationary eagle for hours on end while it leisurely digests its last meal. They primarily eat fish, but also hunt other birds and medium-sized mammals such as rabbits, hares and mink. They'll also scavenge carcasses when they can't be bothered to go after live prey. As I already mentioned, gold crests weigh a measly 5 to 7 grams, which is about the same as 5 paper clips or 1 sheet of paper. Their 9cm length includes their tail, but their body alone is only 7cm long. And finally, they have a wingspan of around 14 centimetres, which is all absolutely dwarfed by the eagles. Their wingspan can reach a whopping 2.5 metres across, which is why one of their nicknames is Barn Door. You can see in this shot why that name is so fitting. They really are humongous and are an absolute sight to behold. Males weigh up to 5.5 kilograms, but the females are substantially bigger at up to 7, which is about the same as a bowling ball. So for a flying animal, I'd say that's pretty insane. Although gold crests are tiny, they're incredibly hardy birds. They can survive temperatures of as low as minus 25 degrees. They manage this by fluffing up their feathers to trap a layer of warm air, roosting in groups so they can huddle together and foraging almost continuously to keep their energy up. In winter, going just an hour without food would likely be fatal. White-tailed eagles have a stunning courtship display known as a sky dance. They carry out high circling flights, followed by gripping one another's talons and then free falling in a spiral to the ground, before separating at the last minute. I'll be attempting to film this next year, so please consider subscribing if you'd like to see that incredible spectacle. I really hope you enjoyed this look at the opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to Britain's birds. And please let me know if you have any other Versus style videos that you'd like to see of any of our other wildlife. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.